Welcome back. Today we're going to take the rover lower body that we've been working on and put that into Omniverse. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's a little bit tedious as it is today, but we'll work on it uh, just a little bit. And for every time I say um, I'm going to try to ding myself a few times just so I can stop saying it. It's really kind of annoying on these videos, so I'll try not to do that. So here's what we're looking at. It is a hub wheel robot. I'm also considering putting mechanized uh, me mechanum wheels in here as well. And the purpose is to be able to move side to side as well as uh, give the chassis some leverage when going up and down stairs. This is meant to go up and down stairs and this is a lo-fi representation of what the the tank treads will look like. You've seen in the past that I've done several robots with tank treads. So this one will be very similar with a big wheel in the back, some kind of uh, gearing and motors. I haven't determined any of that stuff yet. For the purpose of today, I'm just trying to understand how to get this in the Omniverse so I can test there. What I found is that the joints and all the other rigid bodies, none of that stuff transcribes to Omniverse very well. So if you just exported this just as it is, you will lose. If I click on export here, USDZ, I'll lose all this great information that I've set up for myself. So I didn't do a whole lot in here simply because, oh, there I am, hi. Um, because I didn't wanna have to do all that work again. So just basically creating forces on these areas, materials and definitions of certain parts in greater detail, like, like you know, what kind of material this is, et cetera. So I haven't done any of that. And the reason for it is I'm just not gonna do that. I, it's gonna, I'm going to do it all in, in Omniverse eventually, but to start, what I wanted to do is just get this in the Omniverse. So this is going to be about a 5-10 minute video explaining how to get this in the Omniverse. What this is, is a mobile platform, and it will have a LiDAR in the front, some kind of sensor array here, definitely to measure drop-off, an IMU, uh, Orion uh, NVIDIA device and hub, hub motors here. I got some mechanum wheels which I've hidden because chances are I won't be using them, but here's here they are. But I'm thinking about how to drop these down and deploy this as necessary and whether it's necessary or not. Uh, I'm basing this off of, I've seen several videos where folks have built motorized wheelchairs that can go up and down stairs fairly easy. They have, you know, quiet hub motors, wheels when necessary. And when it's time to go up and down stairs, they have this tank um, that, that can roll up and down and deploy. Here is an example, driving those joints. You can see, um, oh, did it, sorry. You can see the, as I drive the joint, pushes the whole assembly down because this is a normal force on the ground. It actually will lift the entirety of the platform up. And because we'll have a rotational point here somewhere, the robot itself will tilt. Will tilt, uh, you know, as the rotation, so it can kind of continue to stay in balance and not go flying or falling or something like that. And depending on the load it's carrying, the load it's carrying loads, we'll, we'll have to look into all of those different forces. And the center of gravity, the center of mass, moment, if it's moving, rotational force, etc. So this is what we're trying to accomplish. Wheels will spin here, tank treads, LIDAR at some point. On top of this will be more things. Metal, uh, this is an aluminum chassis, this will be some kind of metal. 
and uh, that's where we are. Yep. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to export. We've done this before, so I'll make it quick. I'm just going to click on export, click on USD, Z, and we're all done with that. So here we are in Omniverse. Um, and as you notice, they added a bunch of stuff. First of all, and huge, is they added Windows support to some degree, which is really good. I haven't really tested the level of which does not support Windows. So that's that's something to note is that it does support Windows today. Very, very cool. I'm super happy with that. We'll find out how much it supports uh, Windows, and we're talking about Omniverse, but Isaac Sim, if I, if I said that incorrectly, Isaac Sim is now being supported by Windows. And I don't know how much raw support is in there, but I have Ross Foxy installed here, so we'll try it out here in the next couple of videos. Try to keep this one short. Um, so go to Exchange, launch, or actually download and launch Isaac Sim. You can go there, you can search for it, you can just simply scroll down. The list is ex more extensive than a few months ago, and definitely uh, probably going to be more, just given just the amount of connectors that are created, the uh, content that's been put out there. They put a lot of great content out there that I'm already using. And I'm definitely using Omni, uh, Omniverse Create. Code I'm getting there, uh, I am still impartial to my code editors, but I'm, I'm trying to embrace all this kind of all-encompassing one-place tool. And obviously, Nucleus, I have Nucleus servers running locally and some on the web uh, in the cloud. And I'm always monitoring all the news in the news from uh, Canada and SIGGRAPH uh, just last week. So much great content that they talked about. I will be putting out videos as fast as I can on all of these things, especially the machine learning bits as I start to develop them. And I was gone for six months because Omniverse has made so many changes and I had some changes for myself. Okay. Might notice that I'm not in a dungeon in the background anymore. I'm in my workshop in now in Texas, far away from beautiful California. So moving on, first thing we'll do is open up Isaac Sim as we, we saw before. And then we're going to search in the uh, content field for the file you just created. And here is one of them. Drag it on the surface and you'll see it shows up right next to the world prim. For this, we're gonna need, we're gonna do a few things. So this, in this video, I'm gonna keep it short. We're just going to make the LiDAR spin. Um, be careful, note the size of the uh, object. I don't think I have access to their um, dimensioning tool yet. I did look to see if there's a uh, measure in tools. It didn't seem like I saw it, but uh, I'll look for the next time. Should be able to measure to see uh, what size things showed up as. Okay, so that being said, what we're trying to get to is being able to use this in several different uh, synthetic generated environments. So we are going to try out synthetic data, not in this video. This video is just get the LiDAR spin, also um, you know, drop physics on these objects. And these are also very, very well documented on their, um, in their, uh, their documents, but if you're just here to see um, what happens, this is what happens. Okay, so you will notice that your materials show up and your meshes show up um, with, with a weird X form uh, mesh. So what I ended up doing was creating a kind of standard mesh because this, whatever reason, I couldn't attach um, even when I, I um, did not import it by reference. So here you can add a reference to a file and then you know use a copy. Still wouldn't let me use the copy the right way. So what I did is I just copied all the um, you know, basically the entirety of the robot in here. 
duplicate it, and start working from there. So now we have Floor Robot 2, and I can do whatever I want to it. So I can change names of things, and they stay changed, etc. The other thing I needed to do was um, I ended up creating a new X form, and you can see that this kind of shows up in some weird, you know, weird way. It's not exact X form. So I created an X form for each one of these, and I'm not going to show all that in this this video. What I did, it was like 10 minutes of, of uh, converting these bodies over to the correct X form, and mainly the issue um, things that didn't show up correctly with the colors and such. Okay, but uh, that's all there. Okay, so you create the X forms. Let's say let's let's just do one. Let's do left left hub wheel. Um, and then, you know, find the left hub wheel, and I can just drag that body over um, to, dragging it's not working right now, let's try again, there you go, and I can drag, 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 oh, I dragged the wrong one, but anyway, you get the idea, and so when you're done with this, next step is to, in my case, I'm going to create physics, So create some physics. So again, make sure you're on the world prem, and then create physics. Physics scene. You do a ground plane to physics scene, and then from there you'll notice that your model might be below the physics scene. Then I like to have some kind of uh, frame uh, for my world, kind of a light light. So then I'm going to make a spherical light as well. To center on anything that you just created, you just click on F while you're in the um, this view, and you'll see that you're you're right there where you need to be. And I think I'm going to take the second one. I'm going to hide this first one because we don't need it. And oh, hit the wrong one. Okay, so, and then I'm going to drag this second one out. So I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to drag it out. There you go. Excellent. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, with the physics scene, individually, I create my joints. We're going to do that in the next video. This one, we're just going to set up the LiDAR. Super simple. So, set up the LiDAR. You want to drag a LiDAR into your frame and then make it a child of the lighter you have here. So this is the top of the lighter, so I want to make it a child of that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create Isaac and I have all these sensors here. You have lighter, ultrasonic, contact sensor, IMU. We're going to be using pretty much all of these in this robot except the April tag, I believe. Yep, we're going to use pretty much all of these sensors and we're not going to use the, some of these robots already built for you so you can take a look and play with them just as they are, like we've built some stuff with the Jetbot and uh, Carter, etc. But for this case, we're just going to go ahead and create a LiDAR, rotating, and it will take a little bit of time to create, but it will happen eventually. Maybe. Let's try it again. I did notice a couple of times that it, it wouldn't create directly in the body, but there it is, it actually did create. But it didn't pop this open, that's okay. All right, so here's the LiDAR, and in LiDAR, if you wanna take a look at all the raw properties, so like, let's say, um, you wanna take a look at, um, you know, being able to draw lines in your LiDAR, if you wanna change the, uh, the field of view, from 360 in the horizontal to something less um, for you know letters that don't exactly spin all around or the vertical field of view rotation rate um, you know often I, I make this less just for just to kind of do dev work 
and then the visibility is inherited, etc. You don't have to change much of this stuff, but you can make this, you know, just the same as you would have, uh, or similar to what you would have in a real LiDAR. Okay, so that's good enough. And uh, just to test it, that this is a child of this, I'm going to go ahead and run it, and you can see it spinning super quick. And I can change this um, on the fly. I can change all the properties that I want to change on the fly. Like for instance, I purposely made the LiDAR spin rotation rate um, not great. So here I'm stop it, run it again, and it's running super fast. And why why it looks like it's going so fast is because my scale is wrong on this particular um, on this guy. So if I scale this down, it would look like it's spinning slower than it is. I'm just going to manually squish it. This is not how you would do it, but uh, something like that. Oh, by the way, if you um, real good video to watch is um, a video on how to move around. Uh, it's a default video that they have there, and you can see here I had left this uh, mechanum wheel sitting here, so I want to get rid of that as well. So I want to get rid of all of this eventually, but who cares um, at this particular thing? So Alt left click to rotate, and then uh, um, you want to, you know, right click, and then use your ASWD, and if you want to change the, the um, scale of how fast this happens, you can do that as well. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, I'm particularly good with the way everything is set up for myself right now. Any questions, you can definitely either look it up or ask me. Uh, I'd love to answer it for you. So that's the that's the LiDAR, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that, and we'll, in the next video, we'll make these joints, uh, make everything rotate, and then finally, um, and then, it will, yeah, we'll just leave it. This is already a 10-minute video. Awesome. All right, see you in the next one. Next one, we'll make the, uh, um, we'll get the Ross topic and uh, see what the LiDAR sees. Also make the joints uh, revolutes in this particular case and move on from there. Awesome. Please remember, like and subscribe and uh, I'll be trying to put out more regular content now that I am finally in my workshop and if you can see around my workshop, you can't, but next, maybe I'll make one of my robots uh, move around the workshop so you can see what I've built here. Thanks.